Uh, Don Stosma, uh, Utilities Board. Uh, I'm just going to throw something out, and I'm a little bit nervous because I feel like kind of a babe in the woods and I delve into the realm of business plans. But, uh, and I hope this doesn't sound cynical, but I'm trying to lay something out, and that is okay. I'm a standard development organization. I have a standard posted on the website. It is not printable, it is not downloadable, it is not copyable, it is not searchable. It might even be a clunky interface, but it is there. You have complied with the law. I've also got a banner that says, if you want a downloadable, copyable, searchable uh, version of this standard, here's how you can order it. It's no different than a ton of other things you find on the web now where you can download the basic version of something for free if you want the improved version that costs you money and submit that the people that are satisfied with the free version and can find what they want there are people who never would have bought the standard. Anyhow, uh, the people that are serious about using the standards, even for research or as part of their, of, of their business, would have bought the standard anyhow. And I'm wondering if we can somehow, if that kind of a model would kind of make a wash out of this whole thing. And I'm just throwing it out for comment. Again, I'm looking for a straw man uh, trying to find some way forward. David Miller, American Petroleum Institute, we um, do something similar on our website where you're able to look at the document and then go for the, the full document. And to your point, if you need the full functionality because you're a working engineer, that's probably what you're going to do. One comment on additional value from the revenue to the standards developing organizations, we reinvest a fairly large portion of our revenue from our standards in basic research. We do a lot of standards research that go into our standards. We hire content specialists to help us develop the documents in a timely fashion. So we, we do have a model where we are dependent on the revenue to help us do more than just pay salaries, although that's very important as well. And then finally, the point about advertising. Uh, we have looked at that over the years. One thing that all the SDOs are probably aware of, if they're, if they're not, they should be, is that you may get into an unrelated business income tax situation or a UBIT situation with advertising you may find that advertising does not meet your core mission and therefore while you would have revenue come in, you would be paying tax on it and you'd have a whole additional administrative version of how your tax form, Marine nodding, would have to be adjusted to address the fact that you now have to capture UBIT, report it, pay tax on it. So it may not be the panacea that, that it could be simply because of the fact that as a 501c3 or 6, you may be limited in some of those areas. I would also like to ask as well, just uh, mentioning the, the various formats that are protected, uh, secure. Um, if there's anyone here who has experience with making documents accessible for people with disabilities, again, as a government agency, that's something that we also have to take into consideration. Does anyone have any experience with that or they can speak to that? <laughs> 